And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. As a quick note, Ostriches is published by Nestor Games, who also published one of mine. So take that into consideration when I review this. Ostrich is a two-player abstract game in which the pieces move like knights and you rotate the board. Sounds like a mixture of things that we've seen before. Rotating the board. We have Pentago and Quinamit, games like that. Uh, moving pieces like knights. Hmm, I think that's chess. Put those together, and what kind of game will you get? Well, actually, you get a game that's more like memory than anything else. Huh? Let's take a look at the game. In ostriches, each player has six ostriches of their color, which are placed face down on their row at the end of their side of the board. There's also two trees that are placed like this. And once all the pieces are on the board, the game is ready to begin. It's a very simple game. On your turn, you can move any piece you want. It doesn't have to be your piece. In fact, as the game progresses, you're going to forget which piece you have. All the pieces move exactly like a knight in, ch in chess. So two spaces and one space over. Or one space and two spaces over. You cannot move the piece that your opponent just moved. After you move a piece, you are then, for example, let's say I move this piece here. I am then rotate one of these sections 90 degrees. I cannot rotate the tile upon which my piece landed. So let's say, for example, I could rotate this piece like this. And then my opponent does something similar. And we continue to do such things as we rotate. Now, if you, on your turn, move a piece to the row away from you, let's say this player over here moved this piece here, he then flips this piece over. Now, it doesn't really matter what color he flips over. Well, I mean, it does matter, but uh, what, if there's a special ability on it, he can use it. For example, this one allows him to move one of these neutral bushes to another spot. This one allows him to switch two tiles, uh, two of these tiles. This one here is just a plain old ostrich, does nothing. Uh, this one allows you to switch two, well this one allows you to switch two tiles, this one allows you to switch two pawns. And basically that's what you're doing is this one lets you look at some pawns. So basically you're trying to get your tiles face up. The first person who has four of their color face up wins, regardless of who turns them over, whether you do or your opponent does. So while there's going to be strategy and you're trying to move your pieces and rotate to get it into position so that you can land them in the enemy's row, kind of like checkers in a sense, you're also going to, after I think maybe four or five turns, you have pretty much forgotten which pieces are yours, unless you're really good at memory. So when I talk about this game, I'm mostly going to be talking about the memory aspects of it. Uh, yes, there's strategy of moving the knights. Yes, there's strategy of moving the tiles. But if you want that sort of thing, you can get Pentago or Queen of Mid where you rotate and put pieces down. Here, that memory element's really big. I really thought I'd be able to remember the pieces. But after rotating stuff and moving a few pieces around, and you can't look at the tiles. I mean, the, the pieces as you move them, you re I, I forgot almost completely. So for me, it's much more of a memory game than it is a strategy game. And if you're really good at the memory, well, then I guess the strategy game comes into play. I'm not sure who this is really going to appeal to. I mean, I found it okay. I, I like short two-player abstract games, and this certainly is one of them. But I kept coming across a feeling that it wasn't because I was smarter or uh, not as good of a player as the opponent. I just couldn't remember where the pieces were. Aha! Oh, it's your color. I'm sorry. You know, so it's... It's entertaining for a very short period of time. Is it worth getting? I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. It just seems a little too uh, fluffy for me. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.